Good morning. Come on, guys. Say good morning. morning. All right. So if you imagine that we live in the world where things are happening, the amazing things are happening, and we're living in a decade of probably the biggest innovations that will ever happen. But when you look around, you hear nothing but gloom and doom. Why is that? It is because the media, like Crisis News Network, are promoting nothing but gloom and doom. And you ask, why would they do that? It is because they're taking advantage of how humans have evolved. The humans evolved living in the savannas of Africa, always worrying about what is the negative thing that's going to happen. Remember what happened when you were living in the jungles. If you missed the negative news, you got wiped out of the gene pool. If you missed the positive news, nothing happened. So guess what happened? Our brain and the central part of our brain, the amygdala, is tuned to look for scanning for the negative news. And that is the reason why in the news media they know if it bleeds, it leads. And that's why you hear nothing but negative news. But let me tell you, the world is going to be a better place tomorrow than it has ever been. We are living in the most innovative decade. So let me give you some of the things what I mean by that. Imagine the software for human body has not changed for millions of years. Now we are at the cusp of able to rewrite the software of a human body. So imagine when we were growing up, Millions of years ago, we used to get food very every so often, and the body evolved to store the fat. And guess what happens? When you have McDonald's in every corner, your body doesn't know that. It still thinks just because you had a big lunch, it doesn't know you're going to have an even bigger dinner. <laughs> but it stores that food. Now, what if you can rewrite that software to tell the body, don't worry, I had a big cheesecake and I'm going to have a whole pie in the evening. Don't store anything. <laughs> right? And now that is going to be possible. In fact, they have an editing technology called CRISPR, CRISPR-Cas9, that's able to edit the DNA and modify actually how you live. So it's in vivo, in your body, you're able to change your genes completely. In fact, they have a new technology called CRISPR-CPF1 that's a single-stranded RNA that's able to modify your genes. I think the phenomenal things are going to happen. The best part also is that as we are learning, we are realizing that we are not our genes. In fact, 90% of the cells in our body are bacterial cells. And the gut bacteria, or the bacteria in our gut, is actually controls what happens to our body and what happens to our brain. In fact, now we are finding what we eat is who we are. In fact, most of the neural diseases, whether it's Parkinson's, whether it's Alzheimer, or whether it's a high blood pressure, they all come from the imbalance of your microbacteria in your gut. So when your mom said, listen to your gut, she was absolutely the best scientist you ever met. <laughs> right? Now, that imbalance of microbiome, what's going on? Is that as we take antibiotics, we are killing the complete bacteria, good or bad. And when we lose the balance of our bacteria, we in fact change how we think. And all the diseases that are being caused is by the use of antibiotics, use of processed food. And when we do that, we are in fact are changing our brain ourselves. So the so point is, as we start to learn that we, we are so proud of who we are, but fundamentally, we are nothing but the host for parasites. That's who we are, right? And if we don't take care of these parasites, unfortunately, these parasites don't take care of our, us, right? So we're going to go out and essentially say, I am so proud of myself for being a host for these wonderful parasites, right? And I'm going to feed them well, and I'm going to listen to them. So it's very interesting that it is your gut bacteria that releases the enzyme that tells you when you're hungry, 
it releases the enzyme that makes you feel full. It says, hey, I've had enough, stop eating. So when bacteria is hungry, it tells you go and eat. When you say bacteria says I'm full, you stop eating. So think about that, what we do for ourselves. <laughs> now the thing that I was gonna talk about uh, mostly is the mindset. So fundamentally the reason the societies are not changing or improving, there are two main things. If we can allow the societies to dream big, dream so big that people think you are crazy. So when you go out and tell someone what is it that you're gonna be doing, and if they don't think you're crazy, then you're not thinking big. Unless you happen to be crazy, in that case, all bets are off. <laughs> right. And the second thing that you really have to do is take away the fear of failure. If you take away the fear of failure and you give people the power to dream, amazing things can happen. So how do you do that? We as humans have been programmed to think from the mindset of a scarcity. Imagine we fight over the things that are in abundance. So once you can change your mindset from the mindset of scarcity to the mindset of abundance, you suddenly realize nothing but the potential you have rather than the things that can't be done. So think about it. What do we fight over? We fight over land. We fight over water. We fight over food. Now just think for a second. When we look at just in our solar system and we look down, the earth is nothing but one pale blue dot. A tiny dot that no one can ever even see. And we fight over that space. What if going to the any planet becomes as easily as going from here to New York? What it becomes as easy to do, do you still have a scarcity of land? The answer is no. In fact, we are finding the water is so in abundance in all over the solar system, there's plenty of water. So what is the mindset of a scarcity when we think we are confined to be living on this blue dot? Once you take the mindset away that we could be living anywhere, that mindset of abundance changes everything. In fact, the mindset is simply controlled because we cannot think past the current. We cannot think of what is possible. Every single thing that we think is scarce, it can be created in abundance. So imagine, we live on a planet that's bathed in energy, 10,000 times energy just from the sun that we consume in all year. What if we can harvest that energy efficiently, and this is starting to happen. This is a problem that's not, no different than the early days. Our planet was filled of bauxite, but the aluminum was one of the most rare material. As you know, the Washington Monument, the top of the Washington Monument is made of aluminum, not platinum, not gold, because that was the most rare material they could have ever had. It was so difficult to extract aluminum at that time until the technology called uh, electrolysis came about. And electrolysis made it so easy to take aluminum out of bauxite. Now imagine if we are able to convert the solar energy efficiently, we'll have more energy than we ever need. And once you have more energy, you can desalinate the water, you can have abundance of water. In fact, it's about thinking about how, what problem you're solving and are you solving the core problem or not. Many of us here worry about the environment and many of us worry about the fresh water. Now imagine, you can say there is a plen the plenty of fresh water, but there is still a lack of fresh water for human beings. Until you realize the half of the fresh water is used for agriculture. And what if you can change the agriculture to use aeroponic or agroponics, aquaponics, are able to use very little water, then all that water essentially becomes available for humans. But imagine if you go a step further and you see half of the agriculture is actually used to feed the cattle. And what if? you are able to, instead of raising cattle, are able to use a stem cell for a cow and able to convert them into just the muscle tissue that we eat, and now you have a synthetic synbio factories, the biological factory that produce nothing but beef, and you don't need to raise cattle anymore. Now suddenly you realize the fresh water problem becomes a synthetic biology problem. 
And that kind of mindset is what allows you to create abundance of everything. And now you have plenty of fresh water for human being, plenty of agriculture for human being. So it's about how you think about the problem is able to solve, in a, a, as an entrepreneur, the problem you're going to solve. So think about healthcare. How do you provide the abundance of affordable healthcare? By simply looking at the exponentially growing technologies. Today, the powerful sensors are not only becoming cheaper, they're becoming smaller. And in addition to that, another exponential technology is coming along is the abundance of communication and abundance of connections. And when you put them together, you'll be able to use the simple sensors that are really, really cheap in all over the world to be able to diagnose diseases better than the doctor. So imagine in a village, a village girl is able to become a village doctor because she has access to these devices which cost almost nothing and she's able to diagnose every disease better than a, a board certified physician. That isn't that provides abundance of healthcare. You look at the education system, today our education system is so broken, isn't that right? Right? Now, what if I told you that our education system actually is not broken? It is doing exactly what it was designed to do. Our needs have changed. Our education system has become obsolete. It's not broken. It's like going to your grandpa who's using an old flip Nokia phone and say, Grandpa, your phone is broken. And your grandpa says, it does exactly what it was designed to do. I press the button, I dial, and it works. It sure doesn't play Angry Birds, but that's not what it's designed to do. Right? So, the point is our education system are designed for the industrial society where you are able to learn certain skill and use that skill for the rest of your life. But guess what's happening? In the exponentially growing technologies, every skill that you learn becomes obsolete every five to ten years. And when the skill becomes obsolete, what are you supposed to teach? You teach them how to learn. You teach them how to solve the problem. How do you apply the interdisciplinary approach to solve a particular problem? That means when you are in a class today and you are told to go out and solve a problem and you start to work with your peer to get the right answer when you are in an exam, you know what they call? They call that cheating, right? In the real world, they call that collaboration, <laughs> right? Also, we are told we are in the education system, here is the question, here are the four right answers. If you think there are two right answers, you are wrong. There is always one right answer. And we know in the real world, there is always more than one way of doing things. So we are taught to think in a way that kills the creativity. So what if we are told our students there is more than one way of doing the things and work together to solve the problem and you're not learning the disciplines individually but you are applying the interdisciplinary approach to solve a specific problem. That's how you create the abundance of education. I can go on how you can create abundance of food, you, how do you create abundance of energy, but the point is you have to have a mindset that says nothing is impossible. When you start, any one of you who starts to think it is impossible, you know what happens? It becomes impossible for you, not for anyone else. Right. So, if I were to give you one single advice and ask you to make one single pledge, would you do that with me? Okay, stand up and make a pledge. I'm going to dream so big that people think I'm crazy. I am never being, I will never be afraid to fail. I will never think that anything is impossible because it will become impossible for me. I will have a mindset of abundance and I'll never be thinking scarcity. Thank you very much. And this is what we call standing ovation. Thank you.